Welcome to section 14 of Introduction to Image Processing. This section concludes the course with four complete examples using many of the tools and methods introduced in earlier sections. For the first example, here is an image of a front gear from a bicycle called a bicycle chain ring. The image processing task is to determine the exact shape of the ring, how far it is from perfectly round, and to count the number of teeth on the gear. Since that task depends only on the outer edge of the ring, it is reasonable to begin by using the binarize function to do segmentation by thresholding to separate the ring from the background, and then use the filling transform function to fill in all of the holes within that segment to get a simpler image that still has the same outer edge. To determine how far the ring is from perfectly round, there are a variety of tools for computing properties of image segments, which in the Wolfram language are built into the component measurements function. Here is the documentation for the component measurements function, which describes almost 100 different properties that can be computed. Some properties of interest here are elongation, eccentricity, and circularity, all of which refer to some common ways of quantifying how far something is from perfectly round. Here is an input to the component measurements function that calculates these properties, plus the count property, which gives the number of pixels in each component. The dataset argument in this component measurements input causes the result to be displayed in a convenient table rather than as a list. The table shows measurements for four components. Only The only component of interest here is the first one, which corresponds to the chain ring. For a perfect circle, the circularity would be 1 and the elongation and eccentricity would be 0, so these measurements indicate that the chain ring in the image is not quite a perfect circle. The other three entries in this table refer to tiny image fragments with a pixel count of only a few pixels each. Components like this can arise from noise or from fine details in the original image. Zooming in on the binarized image shows one of those fragments with only two pixels, and here is another part of the image with two small, other small fragments. This part of the image also shows details that could incorrectly be counted as extra teeth on the gear. It is quite common in, in image analysis to need to do a bit of cleanup on images like this to isolate or to emphasize features of interest. In this example, that cleanup can be done using the opening function. This shows opening applied to that piece of the image, which has the effect of removing the small fragments and smoothing out these teeth in, on the gear. This shows the same opening operation applied to the entire image. Without zooming in on the image, it is difficult to see the changes in small details, but the result from the component measurements function does now show only the one expected component. The component measurements function can also be used to find the center and the radius of an equivalent circle, which can be used to draw that circle as a highlight on the image to see the slight departure of this chain ring from a perfect circle. The number of teeth on the gear can be counted by counting the number of peaks in the distance between the center of the gear and the perimeter, which requires first obtaining coordinates for positions along the perimeter and the coordinates of the center of the gear. This input uses the image measurements function to get a long list of points along the perimeter of the gear. The image measurements function is like the component measurements function in that it can be used to find dozens of different properties of an image, like color space and intensity statistics. You can find more information about the image measurements function in the Wolfram documentation. The coordinates of the center were obtained earlier using the centroid property in the component measurements function, and the distance from each perimeter point to that center can be calculated using the Euclidean distance function. This input calculates those distances and shows a plot of the resulting list of distances. The task now is to count the number of peaks in that plot, which can be done using the peak detect function. The output of the peak detect function is a list of ones and zeros with ones indicating the positions of peaks. The total of that list is the number of ones, which is the number of peaks. This shows the detected peaks marked as red dots on the list of radial distances. There are 53 peaks, but the first and last peak are actually from the same tooth on the gear, so the actual gear has only 52 teeth. For the next example, consider the task of determining the color of the light in each frame of a video of a traffic light. These inputs import a list of frames from a .mov file and play the result as a movie. The strategy described here would be to first identify each of the three traffic light colors and then determine the color of the traffic light in each frame of the video by determining which of those identified colors most closely matches a color in that frame. One way to get the traffic light colors is to use the find matching color function to find colors from the video that are closest to green, yellow, and red. For example, after picking out a frame with a green light, this input uses the find matching color function to find a color that matches green in a frame where the traffic light is green. 
There are no pixels in this video that are pure green, and the closest color is a combination of mostly green with some blue and red. Similarly, these inputs give the color of the yellow light and the color of the red light. These colors could also be obtained interactively. For example, clicking on this image brings up a row of buttons, one of which is the Coordinates Tool button. Clicking the Coordinates Tool button and positioning the mouse pointer over a point in the image shows the color of that point. Then click on a point with the desired color, choose Copy Color Values from the Copy menu to copy the color of that point, and paste that color as an RGB color value into the RGB color function to get the color. Given the three traffic light colors, the color of the traffic light in any particular frame can be identified by comparing those colors with the colors in the frame. For example, this input picks out a typical frame, and this calculates the minimum color distance between that frame and each of the three traffic light colors. The smallest number in that result is the first number, indicating that the traffic light is green. There are many ways of writing a short program to go through the entire video identifying the color of the traffic light in each frame, this manipulate program shows one approach using the ordering function to find the position of the smallest color distance and then displaying the name of the corresponding color. The general strategy in this example worked because there was nothing else in the video that had the same color as the colors of the traffic light. If there had been other colorful things in the video then it would likely have been necessary to focus on the traffic light rather than on the entire video frame. For the third example, again consider a video, but this time the task is to stabilize the position of the shaky soap bubble within the video frame. This sort of shaking is typical of camera movement. The approach described here is to find matching key points in consecutive frames of the video and then adjust each frame as needed to get the key points in that frame to line up with the same key points in the previous frame. To describe how that is done, consider first a simpler example with two frames of the same scene but where the scene is positioned differently in each image. The frames could be aligned interactively by simply moving the images until they line up, but for aligning all of the images in a long video it is usually faster and more reliable to work out the necessary transformations programmatically. This can be done in a three-step process by first finding corresponding key points in the two images, then calculating the transformation needed to align those key points, and finally applying that transformation to one of the images. There are built-in functions in the Wolfram language for all of those steps. For the first step, this input uses the image corresponding points function to find corresponding key points in the two images. The image corresponding points function is similar to the image key points function that came up in an earlier section, except that it looks for corresponding points in two images rather than key points in a single image. The result is two lists of points, one for each image. This shows those points as red dots on each of the images. The transformation to align those points can be calculated using the find geometric transform function. The second element in that result is the transformation which can be applied to the second image using the image perspective transformation function which aligns that image with the first image. The data range full option is included here to indicate that the transformation is given in pixel coordinates rather than in some other coordinate system. Also, in moving the image, the area left behind is filled in with black. The padding option can be used to fill in that area in some other way. For example, padding fixed fills in that area by copying the pixels along the edge of the original image. Stabilization of the video can be done by writing a program to apply that same process to every frame in the video. There are many ways to do that programming. Here is a method that uses the block map function to step through the list of video frames computing corresponding key points between each frame and the previous frame. The result is a list of elements like this one that gives a list of two lists of corresponding points much like the lists that came up in the earlier example. An important detail of that input is the masking option. The value of the masking option here is an image that effectively discards the top part of each frame before looking for key points. The purpose of that, ma that mask can be seen by taking another look at the video. To compensate for camera movement, it is important to only consider key points that are fixed within the scene and that are not moving around for some other reason. In this video, there are elements, especially in the upper part of the frame, that are moving around independent of the camera movement. The purpose of the mask here is to consider only key points in the lower part of the video where the movement is primarily only due to movement of the camera. More generally, if the goal had been to track some other element within the scene, then it would of course have been important to consider only key points associated with that element. 
Returning to the list of points, the geometric transformations to align each pair of corresponding key points can be found by applying the find geometric transform function to each element in that list. The transformation class option is set to translation here because the camera movement is mostly just side to side or up and down, so there is no need for more general transformations. For other examples, the find geometric transform function can provide for rotations and scaling and perspective transformation and other geometric operations. The result is a list of transformations for aligning each frame with the previous frame. To align each frame not just with the previous frame but with the first frame in the video, it is necessary to apply all of the earlier transformations to each frame. A single transformation that applies all of those earlier transformations is the composition of those earlier transformations. A list of such compositions can be constructed using the fold list and composition functions. The result is another list of transformations, this time for aligning each frame with the first frame. The stabilized video can then be constructed by applying those transformations to each frame in the video using the image perspective transformation function. The effect of the stabilization can be seen by showing the stabilized video side by side with the original video. For one last example, consider an image of biological cells in a rectangular region and an image of fluorescence from the same region and where the task is to count the number of cells that include significant fluorescence. The strategy here will be to segment the image of the cells to get a segmentation like this one that separates individual cells from each other and from the background, and then to compare that segmentation with the fluorescence image to calculate the average fluorescence within each segment. The original images use RGB color space, but separating those images into separate color channels shows that in each image only one of the color channels is non-zero, so a sensible first step is to pick out the non-zero channels and work with the resulting single channel images. It is also useful to apply a noise reduction filter to the images. These inputs use a Perona Malik noise reduction filter. The Perona Malik filter is an edge preserving noise filter like the mean shift filter and the total variation filter that came up in an earlier section. The main part of the task in this example is segmenting the cell image. The cells can be separated from the background using the binarize function to do threshold segmentation. This still leaves some small regions that are unlikely to be cells and some ragged borders, much of which can be cleaned up using morphological opening. The connected components in that result could be separated from each other using the morphological components function, but since many of the cells are overlapping, this gives a segmentation where some of the segments contain more than one cell. Those overlapping cells can be separated using watershed segmentation. As in the watershed segmentation examples from an earlier section, watershed segmentation is often done not on the original image, but on an image after applying a filter to emphasize edges. In the earlier example, this was done using a gradient magnitude filter. Here, the desired effect can be achieved using the Laplacian Gaussian filter, which is done here using the Laplacian Gaussian filter function. The cells show up as dark areas in this result because the Laplacian measures curvature and across each cell the intensity changes from dark to light and back to dark, which is negative curvature, and those negative values of the Laplacian become pixel values near zero, which are dark pixels after application of the image adjust function. Starting points for watershed segmentation, sometimes called seed points, can be obtained as the local minima in that image. Those local minima can be found using the mindetect function. This shows the seeds as highlights on the cell image. Some of the seed points actually fall in between cells. The segments associated with those seeds will be removed later. Watershed segmentation can now be done with those seeds and with the Laplacian Gaussian filtered image. As noted earlier, some of those segments correspond to spaces between cells rather than to cells. Those segments can be discarded by multiplying this result and the earlier threshold segmentation that separated the cells from the background. For subsequent processing, though, rather than this colorized image, it is more convenient to have the corresponding label matrix, which can be obtained by multiplying the underlying image data and the label matrix rather than by multiplying the images. The result is the same segmentation, just given in the form of a label matrix. All that remains now is to compare this segmentation with the fluorescence image and calculate the mean fluorescence in each segment. The basic idea is straightforward, but the programming does involve a few steps. This input generates a list of pairs giving the label from the label matrix and the corresponding fluorescence for each pixel in the image, and this sorts those pairs into sublists for each labeled segment and then computes a list of pairs giving the segment label and the mean fluorescence for the pixels in each segment. 
There are a variety of ways to display that result. This input gives a histogram of mean cell fluorescence, showing a few cells with relatively high fluorescence. And this shows an RGB image where the red color channel is segments with mean fluorescence above 0.3, the green color channel is the original fluorescence image, and the blue color channel is the original cell image. That's the end of the examples for this section. This section was primarily a review of topics and methods from earlier sections, although there were a few additional functions. You can find more information about those functions in the Wolfram documentation, and you can find more information about image processing in general by following links from the Images button in the Documentation Center homepage.